What's up, Meta Nerds? In this video, we're going to look at a bunch of different crawlers, treaded vehicles, which are pretty rare in Star Wars, understanding why they're actually a great option, and what inspired some really unique creations. To understand how we get these great fan models, let's go back and look at the very first model of the iconic sand crawler. This model was made before the concept art and built by Colin Cantwell, the model maker for 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was released in 1968, nine years before A New Hope. Kit bashing is when you make your own creations from model kits, modifying parts and or bashing together parts from multiple kits. Cantwell also worked on almost everything seen in A New Hope, from the ISD, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, and more. And speaking specifically about the Y-Wing in kit bashing, he says, quote, Kit bashing is a method of model building that myself and a few others pioneered in the early 70s. Essentially, you take pieces from cannibalized model kits, cars, planes, trains, etc., as well as shapes from around the office and house. Look closely and you'll see pill bottle engines and easter egg fuel tanks. The Falcon would be changed dramatically, a last minute scrapping after Space 1999 was released, and it looked too close like the ship, the Eagle. And the Sandcrawler model was then shaped by Ralph McQuarrie, who created most of the concept art, and then further turned into what we know and love by Joe Johnston. But it is in that process that we get these sketches of a similar Imperial Sandcrawling vehicle, an armored troop carrier with a mounted gun up top, which would go on to inspire the PX4 mobile command base, an older public era Imperial crawler tank used by the Sith Empire. This massive version would need a crew of 10 and could transport 50 troops, with this long ramp out of the back allowing them to deploy. Tracks that could shrug off smaller anti-vehicle mines and small arms fire. Same goes for the thick armor plating on the rest of this thing, requiring a proper tank or missile firing fighter craft to take it out. Though there is that weak accordion section connecting the two main parts of the vehicle like we saw in the ATT, -E. but they're banking on this turbo laser cannon being able to blow apart any threat it came across. It was also known as a siege tank since it was perfect against enemy strongholds. Being tracked, it can roll right through your shields, not being propelled by electromagnetic and gravitic fields generated by repulsor tech, and could deliver powerful durasteel melting or stone smashing bolts by having all its power directed into this single turbo laser cannon and then put its well-armored nose through that opening and pour out its 50 troopers to secure the position. Over 3,600 years later, Sidious's empire would deploy a similarly sized track troop transport. With an official length of 21.8 meters, the PX-4 mobile command base boasted robust armor and formidable weaponry. Encased in a half-meter thick metallic shell, it featured a centralized command pod further fortified for enhanced protection. Its outer hull was equipped with reflective shielding, while advanced sensors and computers meticulously monitored battle conditions, providing real-time data and AI-generated tactical suggestions to the commander stationed within. Information was relayed through computer displays, holographic tactical interfaces, and communications arrays, which intercepted both Imperial and enemy transmissions. A single Mark 1 ES heavy laser cannon was affixed atop the PX-4, mounted on a slowly rotating turret. Though possessing offensive capabilities, the vehicle primarily served in a non-combat role. Maneuvering across the battlefield on these large track treads, it achieved speeds of up to 100 km per hour, or 62 miles per hour. Though some units were reportedly capable of reaching 200 km per hour, the PX-4 boasted a cargo capacity of one metric ton and enough consumable supplies to sustain operations for a week, and manned by a crew of three, including a dedicated gunner, while accommodating up to seven passengers. The Empire utilized the PX-4 to ensure secure transport of commanders amidst dangerous combat environments. Functioning as a mobile headquarters, it enabled unit leaders to accompany troops while minimizing exposure to potential threats. Typically positioned away from direct battle zones, the PX-4 facilitated strategic decision-making in a secure environment. Deployment involved the utilization of landing craft, predominantly LAATC dropships, being only about 8 inches shorter than the ATT, or it could also be suspended beneath Sentinel class landing craft, or in the vehicle complement of IF 120 landing craft. In hostile worlds openly opposed to Imperial rule, planetary prefects and governors relied on the PX 4 for safe mobility with some opting to reside permanently in its armored confines. In the complete life of Tarkin, we saw how he was almost killed moving in the lightly armored ITT. Moved a lot quicker, but it wouldn't have been such a close call if he was in a PX-4. This command base did remove the weak joint in the middle, even though it was working in the opposite role, not smashing through heavily entrenched enemy positions. It was the opposite, a sort of anchor for the ground forces. But this led to two different fan-inspired vehicles that I think make a lot of sense, and would fill an actual role in military operations. This one is your standard troop transport, one large area which could probably fit a few squads of troopers and speeder bikes, or equipment like portable shield generators and e-web cannons. Really anything, down to just food rations like ramen and canned dubak. In an area where rebels were increasingly getting access to advanced tech like shield generators seen on Adalon, which prompted the Adat Walker advance, 
And I've been sitting on this factoid, just not sure when to throw it in, but I'm glad I remembered this. In these scenes, you can see there are hovercraft that do get through the shielding, but this seems to be from a really smart tactic of having them stick close to the walkers, as the ATATs break the seal, as it were, on the shielding, like hiding under an umbrella or avoiding large waves by staying in the wake of a larger ship. The shielding effect is not present in that area, and so it doesn't interfere with the repulsor tech bouncing off each other like two sides of the same magnet. But back to the model, the design provides a more armored version of the OT, while still giving you the doors to open up and return fire if you want. Put some troops in there with rocket launchers and machine guns or mines, and you get some wild battlefield type action where the troopers can turn this armor into something way more dynamic. Able to deliver carnage and then just keep the ports closed when enemy fire gets too heavy. And same goes for using this thing in urban environments. It's funny to think that with some portable shields, you could effectively lock a hovercraft like the Empire's favorite troop transport, the ITT. Place them at an intersection, and it simply can't move forward, while protecting the attackers at the same time. But the track transport can easily climb over any rubble, physical barriers, or shields that the rebel population put up. And it could pop open these ports for crowd control. Just keep an eye out for stray detonators and Molotovs. And if this was when the Senate was still around, just tell the review board you thought the blasters were set to stun. While the early concept art is right in between these two fan creations by having that big gun up top, though on this more nimble version, we see a pair of forward-fixed dual blaster cannons. It could be light turbo laser cannons, but more likely the level of cannons on a starfighter, far greater than the small arms and even the E-Web, maybe not blasting through heavily armored positions, but through most civilian structures and vehicles. I never really liked these forward opening ramps, but of course real world vehicles do this, and many other Starcraft do as well, and we see them being used alongside AT-ATs, so the walkers would be taking out the major enemy weaponry, and delivering suppressing fire. Since you do have four deadly bolts firing forward from this thing itself, we can see how the forward opening ramp might be better overall. With tactics developed to open and deploy rapidly, like a smaller scale version of its old Sith Empire ancestors, bombarding the immediate front, injecting troops into the building opening or tree line, with troopers spreading out to engage fire on the flanks and get to cover. It looks spacious enough for speeders or smaller frog walkers as well, so that adds another practical element to these more rapid response crawlers. What is really unique is the shape of the track itself. If these were on hydraulics and able to move in response to obstacles, this might be one of the closest things to a truly all-terrain vehicle in the Imperial military, a lot closer than its big at, -AT brother, which could have trouble if the terrain was too steep or rounded. Though for an even quicker rapid response track tank, there is the Century Tank, essentially a tie on treads that can hit 90 km per hour, and packed a light turbo laser cannon and two medium blaster cannons. And what's funny is that it might still be propelled by a twin ion engine, and this was just the successor to the TIE AP-1. So there are light attack treaded vehicles in the larger command station, but I think these fan-made ones fill a nice gap in Imperial capabilities. But what do you think of all of these? Do you wish we saw more non-hovering vehicles in Star Wars? Of course the wheeled versions like the Juggernaut work too, but there's something I just really like about these crawlers. If you have any other suggestions for odd or fan-made craft to look into, comment them down below. Please hit that like button, it's the best way to help me out. Subscribe if you want to see more, and check out these videos, I'm sure you'll like them. But most important of all, remember, never take your hovercraft down a narrow street, and the Force will be with you, always.